Good morning. Today on the bench, I have a Ryobi 36 volt lithium 4 amp hour battery for the Ryobi line of power tools, like the lawn mowers and things. Here, I'll give you a shot of the part number. There you go. Okay, uh, so to take it apart, we're going to need a T15 security torx bit with the hole in the end. Don't know if you can see that. Yeah. You'll need that. We've got four screws to undo, so let's get to it. Okay, got the four screws out. I should mention, before I open it up, the output terminals are here. We've got two temperature sensor, I believe they're temperature sensor at least, in the center, and then negative on the left and positive on the right, if you want to use this battery for some other purpose. Okay, let's crack it open. I'm gonna see if I can do this with one hand. I was wrong. I just had me a small brain moment. This sticker, which is a pretty strong one actually, holds this end of the casing together. So maybe, nope, something is still holding this together. Let me throw it around some more. Beauty, got it open, it just needed a little bit of violence. <laughs> uh, so the cells we've gotten here, they are not visible. Oh, here they are. So it's a, an INR186520 cube. So I am willing to bet these will be 20, oh, 2 amp hour cells at 15 amp rating. We have a total of 10 in series and 2 in parallel to make up the 36 volts and 4 amp hours. So you've got 20 cells in each battery pack. And these are legit cells. These are good. These will do the work that the tools require of them. Um, without degrading too much. So there's a few screws in here that we'll have to undo before I can get the rest of the battery pack out. Um, but just on visual inspection, we've got a fuse here, sorry for the wobbly camera, a fuse, so it's, it's just a permanent one, you can't replace that. And you've got a heat sink down here with what I expect to be a MOSFET for switching the main power to the, the tool. You've got a shunt, a resistor here to measure the current going to the tool and then your main terminals, some computer stuff, a programming port for the computer, I think. Yeah, which is interesting. Uh, not that anyone had ever used that. Uh, but yeah, so you got all the different connections to the cells. I don't know if this performs balancing, but it definitely does have protection against low voltage or high voltage cutouts and things like that, and over current protection, which is really good. Okay, so I haven't been able to get it out, and I've discovered that's because they've hidden a screw, or two screws, actually, behind this lovely little sticker. So that's my job for the moment, getting it out. Okay, after making a mess, whoop, switch my filming around, there we go. After making a mess, I realized that these two little screws require another security bit, a T8X25. So, we'll give this a go, get those out, and then we can have a look at the battery. Ah, success. Okay, we've got our battery pack out. You can see the 20 cells. They're all there. Um, just having a look for the temperature sensors. I'm thinking that might be one just there. Whoop, focus, yeah. RT1, yep. So I am gonna guess that's one of the temperature sensors. There'll probably be another around the other side somewhere or in the middle of the battery. I don't think we're gonna be able to see it. Also, focus. Grr. There we go. So, from one end you can see, they've used a reasonable quality nickel strip. It's not the thickest I've seen on a power tool battery, but it still looks okay. Um, it should be able to transmit the 30 amps that these cells should be collectively rated for. We have a switch. Um, it is potted and it does turn on, so there is a little bit of charge in this battery. I might have a go at charging it up. I don't know if it's really worth it though, because these cells go through hell when they're being used. They, the tools draw a lot of current continuously for the entire useful life of the cell. And that means the cells get hot and it means they degrade pretty quickly. So some people like to take these apart for the cells, but I think for me, I think it's just an interesting thing to just open the battery up and have a look at. I don't think I'll use the cells. I might post the battery online or something just for really cheap for someone who's really keen on it. But 
yeah, it's good to see. It's interesting. Um, I'm just trying to see if there's anything else that you guys might be interested in. Uh, I can have a look at what that MOSFET is. Uh, yeah, let me just do that. Okay, there you go. That's a decent view of that. It's a RU190N06P, I think, or 08. And I'm going to have a look at that data sheet and let you know what it is. Okie dokie. So that's a 190 amp rated 80 volt MOSFET. So because it's an 80 volt, it might ha have a bit of a higher internal resistance than some others, but they have to do that to leave some excess because this is a 36 volt battery. And depending on the power tool, it could be directly connected to a brushed DC motor, which would mean that during the on, like the turn on and turn off periods, it would endure like really big spikes of voltage and stuff and surges of current. So they have to overrate a little bit. Otherwise, that's it. They've got this interesting plastic casing here with some Torx screws, sorry, on the other side. Yeah, two Torx screws or rather four and that's how you'd open up the battery to get the cells out. Bless you.